Hey, so I saw the announcement and I just hopped in here. What it like? What what is this? I'm confused. All right, so um, you know what the dojo is as a as a concept, or um, basically just like we are gonna go over some topics and talk about them and uh, teach teach some fundamentals. So today we're going over like how to improve your reads. A bunch of people like have asked for. Um, like in sessions, particularly on on one v ones and duels. So I'm gonna see if I can ping for the people who are, who like actually particularly ask for this. Because if they ask for it, then don't show up. It's like come on. <laughs> um, okay, so it's just like guiding. I get that. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, That's we're right. just we're gonna workshop the basics, talk about how to get started, that sort of thing. That's nice. Be a like little podcast, All right? Thank you. I like that. Um, who was it that was asking me the other day? They wanted to do a session on one v ones, but I can't remember who it was. Um, I know Grin was asking for that, but he said he's going to be out of the house all day today. A lot of background noise. Oh, weird. Only fine here, but um, I'll, I'll you know I'll I'll move my speak my mic to be a bit closer to my face. And... That's, that's some static in the background. Is that better? Yeah, you're you're way more audible now. The the noise is okay. but at least you're well, audible now. Yeah, there's not a huge amount I can do about the background noise. I've got noise cancelling. Is it on? Oh, it's turned itself off. Okay, that's why. Is that better? That's way better. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know why. I must have accidentally turned it off. Um, you know, because I'm a big brain. Big brain boy. Um, happens. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll see. I don't think more too many more people are going to show up, so we can just just start in that case. Um, yeah. QK, do you want to? Do you want to? Oh, I'll, I'll pass the floor. Well, UK. Well, I just want to go into like duels. So if you want to come in, yeah. And... Send me an in, send me an invite and. I will accept that, and then you can. Yeah. Oh yes. Uh, do you want to stream to the thing? Can you, can you can your internet handle Discord streaming, or do you want me to? Uh, why don't you go ahead? All right. My screen off. Oh. Okay. Oh, on me. Hello there, brother. All right, so just pick any character that you feel comfortable with using in duels. Uh, oh, I just want to do a couple of demonstrations, I guess, that involve a little bit of normal dueling. Okay. Um, character I feel comfortable with in duels. Um, because I'm not very good with many, most characters, but I will pick Warmonger as I normally play. I played a lot of Warmonger recently, so... And Warmonger is one of these fairly meta characters as well, so... Yeah, for jewels at least. Warmonger is one of those characters for reaction babies like us. Side dodge bash to everything. Yeah. I still have got. I still haven't got the helmet from this guy with the, uh, with the, the little fins. The alternate version of this helmet. All right. Oh, uh, feel free to, to take the floor, QK, and tell me, stop telling us what you want us to to do. All right. Well, when it comes to reads, I just want to talk about. There's like three big concepts that people come up with and they're usually just sort of misunderstandings so like the first thing people say about reads is that you have to be like some sort of oxford graduate you know you have to have 20 years in fighting games iq of six thousand. when you don't need to be really a super genius to do it i mean i do it so the second thing is a lot of people say that reads aren't uh, 
they're just guesses, which is true. But a read is a guess that you do with some intuition. There's an educated guess, and that's what a read is. You don't just do things randomly. So see, when you do that, I should have guessed that you were going to faint because I'm out of stamina, so it's the best move. But I thought maybe you would just try to stack up some damage. And then the last thing oh. is that reads only happen in a fighting game, like a traditional 2D Street Fighter game. When reads happen in For Honor, you know, reads happen when you're playing a shooter, reads happen when you're playing chess, you know. So that's like the big three things I think people always mess up on when they're talking about reads. You know, anybody can play the game and react to 50-50. So if I do this, you don't need to be someone who's played a lot of Street Fighter. You don't need to be smart. You can just see the unblockable coming and make your guess. So that's really just about the mindset. So the second section I guess I want to talk about is sort of the thought process behind making a read. So this round, uh, let's just stop and I'm going to try to demonstrate something. So when you see me do this, you know, there's at least two different outcomes. And what are those outcomes, right? That I let it go or I faint it. So you know what I can do. You know what my potential actions are for the bash, for the unblockable. So once you know what I'm capable of, what am I going to do? And everybody has their preference. Everybody has something that they tend to do on repeat. I like to do light, go almost level three, faint. Some people like to do only level one. Really, there's anything that an opponent could do, they might do it. So figuring out what your opponent likes to do, what your opponent doesn't like to do, takes time. And I think that's another thing people don't like is investing a lot of time. Just to give a basic example, uh, I like to faint this unblockable heavy a lot because I feel like people dodge or parry more than they worry about getting hit. So someone who sees me do this a lot, they might decide I'm going to light or I'm just going to wait for the counter guard break. That's just because it's my habit. So, figuring out what an opponent likes to do is your main objective. And the basis of that is knowing what the possibilities are, which is commit or feint, and then knowing how you can respond. You can zone OS, you can parry you can dodge you have all these tools that you can apply to defend against somebody so you just have to guess is he going to commit and if he commits what can i do can i dodge and punish can i parry what is the most advantageous is he next to the wall so dodging and guard breaking might put him at a wall splat and this sounds like a lot, but really it's just in the moment, I see that Span's at the wall, fainting might be really good. But Span knows that I can faint for a wall splat, so maybe a level one will work. Because he's trying to defend. He doesn't want to get wall splat, so he doesn't look out for a simple level one bash. When you think about every little thing that happens every little thing that can happen all at once it's easy to feel a bit overwhelmed but when you practice for long enough and you know what a character is able to do you're able to just internalize that not think about it and move on 
So a lot of people, I remember Stag Matica actually talked about this before, think very slowly, not because they're, you know, dull or anything, but there's so many options. What's going to happen next? You need to be able to clear your mind. You need to be able to live in the moment. When you see someone dodge to the side, that's when you start thinking. And then when you see if the bash start up or you see the unblockable heavy start up, you move on. You know what's coming, so what can come next? You move one piece at a time and you go from there. So a lot of people are going to think, how do I train reads? How do I get better? And the answer that nobody likes to hear is that it's going to take a minute. It takes a lot of practice to get better. It takes a lot of practice to be able to move very quickly once you've learned everything you need to learn. Once you've got everything ready, you just have to be able to go with the flow, sort of rely on your muscles instead of relying on your brain. In For Honor, it's very basic because when I do the bash, Span has to dodge for two different timings or he has to, I guess, light interrupt for level three would be another option. And it's that simple. I know what he has to do to defend and I can exploit that and I don't have to think about it. So I'm low health, and I went for the full one, because if he punishes a level one, I'm dead. If he punishes level three, I'm dead. So I may as well take a risk and do a level three. And then I knew that he was likely to go for the level three because that was the only way he'd kill me in one go. So I waited for the level three because I knew that it was if he was going to go for the level one, uh, There's a lot less reward for the risk. Yeah. So that's sort of just the idea. I was rambling for a minute there, but that's just the concept. If you understand my just is you just you see the opponent is at low health and you quickly internalize it. Risk and reward. So practicing your reads is a little bit tricky. The easiest thing to do is to find a partner, find somebody who you can frequently play with and you sort of learn what they prefer to do by now span has seen a lot that i faint the unblockable heavy instead of go for it he's able to exploit that oh it's based on the fact that i do that so often and i also able to parry at the wrong timing all the time come on span <laughs> so yeah that's a big part of practicing is not just practicing so you know know what's available also practicing so that you don't mess up when you know when you make a good when you make your read that you can actually execute on that read exactly the timing to dodge is always going to be the same for the dodge heavy for the level three so once you're able to practice that sort of part of your practicing with another player you get that down and then you're able to get when is the player going to do level three when is the player going to do level one and you sort of build on that foundation just over and over so now if i fight any other warmonger i know when to dodge and i know what the stakes are the unblockable heavy is very gb vulnerable even mid swing the level three bash gives a good reward but it's not really safe to throw you can do a lot of things to try to get around it I force Span to act, I punish that action. If I can add um, a little something to what you just said, when you... Oh, shit. Um, when you defend, you do a lot of raise, but also when you attack, you're constantly reading um, what your opponent's gonna do, so that's the part as well. Yeah, you're right. So, one thing that you could consider 
when Span has his back to the wall is that he needs to avoid getting parried. He doesn't want to get the impale for how much damage is it these days? Span? 30. The, mm. 30, yeah. So you don't want to get impaled and wall splat. So maybe he's going to faint more. But all these things overlap at once, and you only need to think of a few of them at a time. So now I have frame advantage. I know Span's going to defend. Span with something, he could do another thing, so I'm just going to wait. He has advantage. Defend. It's just simple back and forth. And as much as I would like to sort of say that there's more to it, say that it's deeper than doing that, it's really simple. You know, is the level one, level three, or a faint coming? And those are the potential outcomes. But practicing being able to adapt to an opponent's sudden shift in playstyle, being able to adapt to how each person plays the same character differently is really the skill that you need to practice. Ooh, light pair. So that was an example of a read. I noticed that QK has been doing the unblockable into the same side light a lot. Um, I have been been making a mental note for the last three rounds for the next time that he throws an unblockable that hits me to parry immediately afterwards because he's going to do a lot because i can't react to the lights um so yeah that was my that was a, a read there and, and i guess that that is the other aspect of it when you you are guessing but you are over the time you're also learning what your opponent could do and you're and you're picking up on their patterns it's difficult in a short duel where you only have like um, sorry if I, I can't really talk and duel at the same time. I'm really, I've been really impressed that you've been managing to. <laughs> um, it's important when you're. It's hard to do in, the, in a, like a best of three, a, sorry, best of five, like normal duels are, but um, or a first first of three, I guess. It's uh, sorry. now 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 Warmonger is distracting me by by yelling. I'm at me. gonna remake the lobby. Keep talking. All right. So it's hard to to pick up on patterns in that short amount of time, but players do have things that, like, people don't think about what they're doing all the time because it's if you're thinking consciously about every action you do, it's normally too slow for you to actually be effective. So people rely on their muscle memory, and you will rely on your muscle memory as well, but that means you can also exploit that. So if they aren't thinking about mixing their patterns up, you will be able to observe those patterns a little bit easier. Um, yeah, so that so learning about what your opponent is going to do is a big important thing. And something King Potato mentioned here in in chat, which I think is also a very good point, is um, I'll pick whoever. In that case, I'll go with the new guy because my control is just going to do great. Um, you need to like do, you need to know does your like assess the skill level of your opponent to a certain extent, and what what do they know? as well is quite an important yeah that's uh that's actually a pretty good note and i chose kensei for a very similar reason so i'm not expecting anybody to you know be a long time fan of my writing but for those of you who are i love you for those of you who aren't i hate you <laughs> but um you know a lot of people will go into a match and they'll find a kensei and I use Kensei in every freaking guide I make because it's a very easy example. We've all walked into a Dominion match, found a Kensei, and every time we throw a heavy, every time we dodge, whatever, you just see... Here, Span, throw something. You see this, right? We've all seen this guy. He's like rep 70. He's still doing this every single time, and it's really frustrating. But it's very exploitable. So this is just sort of for me to prove like if you've ever thought that you can't make reads but you've ever found this guy and you've killed him just by doing what span is doing right now throw an undodgeable parry crush encounter then you're making a read it's not a complicated read it's not hard necessarily because those players are very predictable but when you're able to do it to the point where you see the dodge and you just punish automatically then you're making a read very simply. 
So whenever Span does something, he's probably going to have, have the suspicion that my defense will consist of dodge heavy. And because of that, I need to be aware of how much I do it. It's a really comfortable habit to pick up just playing Dominion. People are too frazzled or too inexperienced to be able to punish it. But it's really punishable. And I have to be aware of that. But it's still a good move. So if he throws something, I can still dodge. Once you prove to your opponent that you're not a one-note Kensei who's just going to dodge heavy every time, then the move becomes usable again because now they have to guess how you want to defend. If he throws a top attack, I can deflect it or I could side dodge heavy. It's really about finding out what your character is capable of and then what your opponent expects of you. So for Kensei, they always expect it. the side dodge heavy. But Kensei can do a lot more than just that. Because when you have an undodgeable coming from the top, from Kyoshin, you can forward dodge, guard break with your superior blood. So, it's about what an opponent's expectations are and how you can sort of break them. And here, I know Span would prefer to dodge because there's a lot of damage flying at him. So it's a nice, simple, soft thing from the unblockable. Here, he forward dodges into a guard break because it would prevent me from dodge heavy. Again, it's just repetitive. What can this character do? Is that person doing what this character can do? How does Kyoshin force Kensei to throw on dodgeable heavy? Or not on dodgeable, dodge heavy. How does Kyoshin force Kensei to stop doing it? When he dodges forward, when he does his uh, stuff out of Kaze stance, he's forcing me to maybe use my dodge heavy. But because it's Kyoshin, he's got those crushing counters, he's got those undodgeables that will really hurt the feel. I need to reconsider my actions. And that's sort of where the long-term variety comes from, playing a game like For Honor or Guilty Gear, is how do two characters interact in a fight? So he knows that I committed, or not committed, but he knows that I fainted last time. He does his own OS. It'll catch committing and it'll catch fainting. He takes a risk with his read, but he's rewarded. Yeah, then I knew you had enough health to die from a zone no S if you fainted a guard break. So it was, to me, it was a good re was a good risk reward um, to go for it. Even and you so far haven't parried a uh, zone OS, so I know that yeah, he's bad. not fainting enough to bait them out. So even for someone who is professed bad like me or Spam, making a read really sort of isn't that difficult because it doesn't take reactions it doesn't take tons of time and investment to understand the concept getting good at it to be sort of a competitive player does take time which that's up to you if you really want to be one but no one is going to be stopped from playing the game in this situation it is different when you can't react to lights or you find someone who can react to lights because that sucks, but hopefully you're playing a character who isn't destroyed by that. That's all I can say. I mean, that does... Please. It's part of working out your opponent as well. Um, it's working out where they can... What things they can reliably react to and what things you can do to open them up. And if, you, if you're if you a... You know, it, you have to throw out attacks in order to, to get, gather information from your opponent um, of the things they are capable of doing. So, I mean, QK has probably light attacked me enough times. He knows that he has, he's, he knows, in these rounds, he's seen, and he also knows me as well. He's seen that I basically don't light parry on reaction, and I struggle to light parry on prediction as well. So I'm not going to be, and I struggle to block lights on reaction as well. I, I'm talking, so I'm not trying as hard. So he's not going to have to, but he also knows that means that 
I because I, he can throw lights open a little bit more safely. But he also knows that he's not going to be able to catch me with a mully because I'm not going to try and parry on light timing anyway, unless it's a very hard read. And so he's not going to. Every time he throws a heavy, he's not going to expect expect to catch a light parry from from me. Whereas if you're running into an opponent who can parry lights, then sometimes you throw out uh, heavies and or just to hit them out of their their light parry attempt. Um, so, so Span, you actually brought up something good. You brought up a molly. So why don't you tell everybody what that is? Yes, I'm not sure why I'd mentioned it. So a molly is basically a mix up between a light attack and a heavy attack. Um, named after the streamer Mal Malicious, I think he's called Malicious. I, I, I can't pronounce his name. Um, but essentially, he played used to play a lot of Warlord um, when the game first came out, and he would throw light attack, light attack, and then heavy attack. And because the lights were reactable, well, quite most people could parry lights on reaction, but had to like warm up for it. People would then expect a light attack, and they would eat his heavy attack. Yeah, they see red, they parry, and the heavy's still flying at them. And uh, that was his... He would say, oh, they got mullied, because that's the... Um... And most most characters with most heavy attacks can uh, not faint to parry, or faint even to block a heavy attack if they parry on light timing. It depends on the speed of your open heavies. Some characters, like Gladiator, um, although I think that got changed, actually, um, so his faint timing is later, but a character with 700 yeah, mess speaking, attack. That was the rule. Yeah, and if they and if the opponent has very slow heavy attacks, sometimes you can faint. You can parry on light timing and faint and block a, uh, a heavy attack. For example, Highlander, you're not really going to mully people with his his heavies because they're a thousand milliseconds. So if somebody just parries on light timing for that, they could probably faint and block um, your follow up your like full length heavy. Um, but this is one of the things that you. It's, again, it's a mix-up, so you will work out whether that is what your opponent is useful. doing uh, and actually useful. So, like again, other mix-ups we have are the forward dodge bashes. Um, it's good to know which mix-ups work in theory and which mix-ups work in practice, because if I'm like playing Blitz, for example, um, who's just joined the chat, hello, Blitz, um, I will... Um, reaction. Who's hello, a, very, very good at reacting. I know that if I do my forward dodge headbutt, it's not going to land very often because um, he can react to it. And so I will have to mix up that a lot with like delaying it if I am going to try and use it or just go on the defensive. Whereas if I run somebody with worse reactions, they are either going to... I can do the buffered headbutt basically all the time because they can't react to it. And I can also just guard break them out of neutral because they're going to basically... If they're dodging, they're going to be... They can't react to the buffered headbutt, but they won't be able to... Like, they they'll react to movement, so I can catch them with a, a like buffered, just a regular head. This regular is competitive guard for break. honor. I mean, uh, sorry, I just got a ping from it. So. Well, competitive for honor relies on fours, and fours sort of breaks the typical mold of what gameplay is like because you have the introduction it's, of team dude, fights. It's light, light, heavy chain. I don't think that's too fucking hard to understand. Okay. Um, I mean, it's simple to understand. It's a simple concept, but how far you can take that concept is how far can you take that? You get block. It's block, block, and then oh, ooh, maybe he's gonna throw a light. Maybe you won't. Uh, I'll try Perry. And you, then you sorry, it Paige. Up. If you if you don't want to like be part of the lesson or whatever, that's then just you can just leave. Stupid, you know, it's cool. Dude. Okay. Well, if that's all you have to contribute, you can. You don't have to be here if you don't want to. So. What do you mean contribute, like, dude? Okay. It's light, light, heavy. Like, what's so advanced about it? Well, obviously, if you do right, light, like, light, I heavy. came here, I expected to hear something about a wedding or something like that. You know, actual better. So, no, no, light, light, heavy. Okay. Well, I mean, well, you have. We were talking about the history the of uh, of what molly mullying is, is. Is parrying on a heavy or mullying? It's a, it's a chain. It's a it's a it's basic not, ass chain. Not, what does that? We weren't name? talking about from chains. We were talking about from neutral. Okay. Well, goodbye. <laughs> it's fine. You it's all right. What was he complaining like about? I don't know. Just something. So, anyways, oh, garment, you've got very bad. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, Here's one more thing about risk and reward. This oh, is hey, a 31 damage heavy versus a 12 damage light. What's scarier? 
in your opinion, Sven, your professional opinion. In my professional opinion, the 31 damage heavy is scarier. So I know that I could probably get more of these uh, deadly faint lights off, probably. So once I'm able to get in there, I force Sven to see what he would rather do. Run the mix-up again, maybe block a light, or catch a f attempt at guard-breaking, or eat the heavy. So that's just basic risk and reward. So I see you in dojo questions. What if the enemy can react defensive, offensive? So that's a good question. And we were talking about that a second ago. What if the enemy can see your lights? What if the enemy can see your bash? It's not always easy to deal with someone who can deal like Simple that. answer. You can't do anything because this game's meta as shit. Hey, Paige. All right. Like, basically. So no, like it... All right. Sorry, um, Blitz and Rippy obviously regularly run into people who can react to everything, and they are fully capable of still of still uh, playing the game. Them, so one v one. Yeah, what's what, about... Blitz? What's your approach is when you when you run into a, a yeah. highly reactive player? Uh, it depends on who I'm playing, honestly. Well, if I'm playing like playing... Zon. If I'm yeah. playing like Zon, then uh, most people, I have not met a single person that can distinguish the dodge forward heavy from the bash. So I just try to mix them up with that. Uh, if I'm playing like Warlord or, or BP, for example, I'm not going to do much. I might like, you know, try to, I don't do like lights and heavies occasionally, but mostly I'm going to play the defensive game. So yeah, if mm -hmm. I can't Something, play the uh... defensive game, I just lose. Yep. Something with BP cool. that I can add is not everyone will react to your bash, will react to parry flash. So it can be kind of risky to use unblockable with all the option selects, but it's still an option you can use. While if you play Warlord, you really have nothing else in your headbutt to attack. Yeah, hardly anybody in the game can react to parry flash though consistently. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, people so, can react but to the animation. In a world where there is that much option select, it still remains super risky to. He's an indicator very, offense. Very unfortunate. Hopefully, it goes. But luckily for us, Span is not such a person, so I can bully him. Oh, God, my. But when you're fighting somebody who can react to your neutral offense, generally you sort of are forced to turtle. You can't deal with them from neutral unless you just have something that. But you're forced to play the defensive read, and if you can't pull the defensive read, uh, you just lose. So can I ask? So well, playing defensively is kind of a different beast from playing offensively. It requires different types of reads, and again, it's character based. You know, it's if, not really a big read I'm, to just press the attack button when you think he's gonna do something. I mean, when? How do you know when? I mean, that's the fundamentals. Obviously, when reading is not like the whole something we said at the beginning of the thing is that reads are not really particularly complicated. People people say like, oh I can't read or I really struggle making reads this and the other. But really then then you don't like if you are capable of just you know if you're capable of playing the video game, you're capable of making reads. They're not complicated to do. So Yeah, if he forward dodges and I light when he forward dodges, then noodles. that's a read. It's not complicated. What becomes complicated is whether or not Span realizes that and he's able to sort of punish it accordingly or he's able to sort of force me to do something. If he dodges forward and GBs or headbutts and I just try to light, that can be punished like that. If I try to blade blockade when he hits me with something and he can just guard break, he can throw something maybe slower. Like, I believe heavies will catch a blade blockade. If you blade blockade on hit and then... You fall up with the heavy. Oh, maybe not all of heavies. They're quite they're quite fast in chain. But this is another it's important Yoshi. thing. Yeah. 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 You can usually just parry and light timing with warlords chain heavies and parry both. That's what I do. And that's like mm -hmm. a, a warlord thing. If you're playing Kyoshin and you get hit with a light, you can never blade blockade because Kyoshin's chain links are very slow. So, I mean, if I know that, I have to delay it. But he also knows that. It's different. So if he doesn't know whether or not I know that, he can try it for a blade blockade, or he can wait in GB. The read yeah. itself is a simple action. Tactile, tactile How people interact is a different thing. Yeah. Um, 
if I could, there is one thing that I would suggest as a like a concrete thing that can improve your reads, which is playing every character at least a little bit. So the sorry, well, I'm being attacked by my cat. <laughs> um, I would recommend that you play every character to rep one or rep two in uh, matchmaking and actually play it because the only way you can make good reads against your opponent is if you know what your opponent is going to try to do if you know what they're capable of doing like we said you need to you need to know the options that are available before you make um before you predict what those options are going to be so the best way to acquire that knowledge is isn't, isn't play, necessarily playing against them but playing as as the characters then you will you will have to in order to succeed playing as a character you need to you will learn their moves and what they're capable of and what what actually works when you use it on opponents and then you can then use that to be better at defending against them so you sort of get like a uh, an understanding of how they want to act because you know how you need to survive or attack as that character and then you know how they think because that's how their kit is and you can bring that with you whenever you fight them. Yeah. Um, for example, a, a lot of these sort of people talk about like sort of the one trick competitive players who just who've some players who've only really like competitively played one character. But those char those players often play like other characters. In fact, often play all of the characters outside of the, the competitive you know, actual competitive game. So we talk about Barak, for example. He plays mostly plays warlord and he plays um berserker as well i think he's played a bit of um uh what's the face nusha but he also he knows how to play every character and he has played every character at least probably a considerable amount so he's not because that's like you, you you learn most people learn best by doing and and um playing every character is the best is the best way to acquire that knowledge to be to do um, with each character. So um, I've played some Shaman. I know she has a very slow unblockable that has a soft faint. So I know sort of how you eat, how you get her pressure off. She has her zone, which is good for option selecting. She has her bash for dodge mix up, which is very good for pressuring somebody, getting that damage, getting a chance to bleed. And that bleed stab is everything to Shaman. So I need to look out or I get this. So, again, it's not complicated to say, is she going to GB? Is she going to bash? It's not necessarily hard to try to talk about it. But if someone knows what you can do, if someone knows that you know, that's when it becomes complicated. If I do skewer, am I going to commit or am I going to feign it? Span knows that it does a lot of damage. Span may know that I like to commit to high reward things, even if they're very risky. So how does he respond knowing that we have all this history? So am I going to faint because he parried it last time? Or am I going to commit because maybe he'll think I'm not going to commit this time and just eat it raw? All the little variations come off of repetition, playing against the same people. If you meet the same guy on the same point in Dominion over and over again, the fights become less instant stomps, less one person dominating never, and eventually they become a little slower. You see someone's patterns, you see what they like to do, and you just get ready for that one person. It's always about being flexible, because if I go against a different Shaman player, they're going to bash a lot more, maybe, and I have to be ready for that. So that's really where the variation and the extra work comes from making reads. Shaman forward dodges. I either side. Are you guys still or... talking about Fauna? Okay. Yeah, sorry. that's. Yeah, that's. A, this is a for honor thing. <laughs> uh, I have a question. May I ask something? Yeah. Sure. Is this for beginners? The uh, dojo is generally beginners. Yeah. Yes. We can do beginners and all that. Uh, okay. If you feel like you know all this stuff, then hey, you don't maybe have to be here if you don't want to. No, I was just. I mean, I mean, I mean. Well, um, 
Well, what the heck? What the heck? Don't worry about him. He's just he's clearly got some patience issues or something. Um. So well, well, so, well I mean, these well, are well, these are all the foundations of basically all the sections and. Like our friend pointed out earlier before you get kicked out of the voice chat, it's not as complicated as it seems just to lay every piece out and know what you need to practice and know what possibilities there are. Yeah. But I think so... we can cover a couple of um, particular uh, aspects that I mean, because for, for me, when I'm playing Shaman, there's a few things that I particularly think about um, yeah, exactly. when I am. Um, so, so in particular, I think a lot about frame advantage and I think a lot about interrupt potential, which I guess is also the same thing as frame advantage. So Shaman has the property that her, I mean, her light attacks have light hits. So you can um, zone option select my chain heavy, for example. Um, oh, let me just uh, get to it from a, from a light. You can see that after that, uh, like, zone option select works and he hits me. But if I get to it from a dodge heavy, for example, he cannot zone option select me. Well, if I actually land my dodge heavy. If it's blocked, he blocked. can. But if it's landed... Oh, that was the wrong side. I'm an idiot. He cannot zone option select. You can see his stamina is going down because he's trying. But... You need to know, because Shaman's heavies have... Someone's just joining and leaving. Can you stop doing that, whoever it is? Oh, it's Paige. Okay, I'm just going to... Uh, one second. Let me just... Uh, so can somebody... Uh, uh, Dem or... Yeah, can Dem or Stag or somebody just sort it out? Just ban the guy. Um, he's clearly not being here to learn. He's clear to uh, interrupt and disrupt. So... Thank you very much. Here we go. Goodbye. All right. Um, so, shaman's heavies, all of her heavies, the dodge heavies and the the regular heavies have heavy hits done, which puts the opponent in for into stagger for a lot longer. So I know that if I land a heavy, I can use that to make my chain heavy uh, less. It can't be option selected for at least with the zones and with things that have 100 ms and because ability. i'm so glad you, you, you can... might think he's probably going to zone options like because this is really good yeah so i know so i knew he's he's likely to think i know that he's likely to think about zone options like, or dodge attack for the same same things um so when i land a heavy i'm much more likely to faint or at least to, to know that i am uh able to faint to to guard break a bit more safely and if if i know if i know my opponent doesn't know this and he's going to try and zone options select. let's say I, I faint from neutral a lot and every time i do it he's own option selects all right and if i throw i say he really loves his own option select well i know that if i ever do land a if i ever do land uh oh, my reactions are terrible so my point is that if i ever do land that wow okay wow. i'm yeah. All right. If I ever do uh, land a fucking uh, heavy from a dodge heavy or something, I know that I can then do the left. Ah. Yeah. I can I know that I can then do my faint to Garbrick because he's gonna zone option select and I will I will catch him because I know that he the zone option doesn't work in that scenario. He's so just gonna keep mashing zone option select and he's gonna get punished because he probably doesn't know about it. Yeah. Um similar things with we talked a little about well, what happened in a few times in the um, the Warmonger mirrors, um, but same thing happens with Shaman's unblockable heavy, which is very slow. If I light and then, oh, if I light, oh my god, I can't change sides today apparently. If I light and then unblockable, um, QK can interrupt my unblockable. But if I heavy and unblock it, what's gonna kill you? Um, sorry, my my game is like is the performance has been super bad recently. So every time it goes like twenty four frames a second, everything something happens. All right, yeah, you can block this one, and um, you can't interrupt it after a blocked heavy. So I know that that's when I can throw this attack is because 
I can't throw it safely without interruption from a light attack, so I'm going to be very much less likely to use it because it increases the number of options my opponent has to defend against it and therefore makes me reading it much, what he's going to do much harder. But if I That's, can here we go. go for an, uh, an option where I don't have to worry about that, then I'm much more likely to actually throw that attack because I know that he does, has reduced options. He has to make a harder read for him because um, he has less that he can cover. And if he tries to make the read before the poke, then, you know, I can... Um, if he tries to poke, then I know that I can hit him anyway. So, And that's sort of why people don't like option selects because there's sort of a difficulty in visibility. So, I mean, if in a situation where you throw the unblockable heavy and I parry it, was it a zone OS? Was it a, like a GB OS, some other forbidden tech? If I just, if you see the zone, is that a failed parry? Am I just trying to interrupt? And that's sort of why people are very frustrated about option selects uh, beyond just basic zoning. You know, some people don't like zoning, but let's not get into it. But that's yeah. why people are very frustrated with those and why we are expecting them to leave because it makes it very difficult because you don't know how your opponent is defending. Really. But yeah. in a situation we where I poke for the unblockable, Span is able to see that and he's able to devise a plan for it. And that forces me, is he going to do it? Is he really going to go through with it to try to counter my thing? How do I defend now? And that's sort of how people metagame between each other. That is where the combat depth in any fighting game comes from because I have to guess. I have to think what Span might do because he saw that. Maybe he's going to counter it. Yeah. So what do I do? Yeah. So we talked a bit about gathering information, like need to find to work out what your opponent is doing. In the world where we do have lots of open sex available, a lot of that is going to involve just fainting to neutral and watching what they do and seeing... And a lot of it, fainting from neutral, so for example, you need to know the kind of things that you're capable of baiting out. For, for me, playing Shaman, I know that, sorry, my dagger cancel is like partially reactable on the sides um, and has different options from it compared to my heavy and block all. So for my, my chain heavies, I can faint to a, I can soft faint to a dodge, and but I can't use the dagger cancel, but where it's my neutral heavies, I can use the dagger cancel. And I know that then opponents will be thinking that I have that available. So it's going to be harder for me to, if I want to find out what he will do when I throw an unblockable, it's harder for me to work out what he's going to do because my neutral tools are less less like that unblockable. So a lot of it will involve, you know, fainting to neutral. Um, and that includes from your chain as well. And if you don't get damage from your from something from an attack you throw out but you do get information from it that's still something valuable like it doesn't even if i get a zone option select selected i will you know if if i do throw a light into my unblockable and and i get zone option selected or even like you know zone interrupted that just because i've eaten damage that doesn't mean that i've lost the interaction because i know that he's going to do that and that means I know, especially I can think about what he's going to do when he's at low stamina. If I can try and force him out to do that, um, I can. I have gathered information so that I know what the kind of thing. Yeah, like I said, I, it, even though I've lost health in the process, I've gathered information, and that information might be helpful in getting more damage in the future. Um, and maybe not even this round, but maybe in the next round. In in classic duels where it's best of five. You, and I see this a lot. Bar Barak does that. And if he learns, if he loses the first two rounds, he will talk about what he's going to learn and what he changes up. He very rarely loses all three rounds without without trying to adapt first. See, I see someone dodge forward. I'm a very dodge flighty guy. Span can guard break that. So Span, uh, let's do just a couple of rounds, mm -hmm. and I'm going to try to explain my thought process. Since you said that you have a hard time uh, dueling, yeah, I can't duel. Walking out mode. Yeah. So, just come at me as you would normally. So this is a shaman. I know I have to watch out for those four dodges. Okay, so he can do that. I kind of forgot about that. And with shaman, you have to faint to guard break or faint to parry a lot. Her dodge heavy is just so oppressive. So now shaman's low stamina. So I'm going to try to just get some extra pressure on while she can't defend as well. Ah, that regening health hurts so much. 
She can chain after that. I forgot that. Ah! Uh, look at this. Look at this. So, on a for, on a real serious round, those dodge heavies just destroyed me. So next round, I'm gonna be thinking about that, and we're gonna see whether or not Span continues to do it because I'm really bad and I have a hard time fainting to parry shaman's freaking 500 of mess dodge heavy. God, look! Look at Spaniard executing. <laughs> BMing. Um... He's BMing on the dojo stream. It's more to give you more chance to talk than it is to <laughs> executing. I normally don't in duels, but uh... so if I'm gonna aggress now, I'm gonna just try to faint, see what Span does. That was a normal parry. I'm gonna. Ooh, he reacted to the dodge light. Do this. He does nothing. Just constantly doing the dodge heavy. I hate shaman players. So I'm going to try to just stop him from getting into his dodge stance because the dodge stance takes extra time to start up, but he can always just defend like this. So I need to really adapt and I need to figure out when he wants to wait, when he wants to do his dodge heavy. And that's what I'm having trouble with because with Shaman, the dodge heavy is very strong, but sometimes waiting can be very strong too. And it's not... Span knows that it's not easy to always counter Shaman dodge heavy, so he's able to throw it a little bit recklessly. And there it goes. Dodges the light. See, I zone OS there because he's been doing a lot of feints. I knew he was going to dodge heavy because that's just how he's been responding. Now he's out of stamina. Toast stab won't down, but it gives me skewer. How does he respond? He parries. I could have parried that, but I went for a very safe option, and I'm just getting some nice damage here. I have low health. He's got low health. Looks like he wants to be daring. I was trying to be a little bit more cowardly with my approach, and I can't faint to GB against that. Shaman is a nightmare character, and that's faster than my neutral dash. So he yep. sort of throws that out because it's kind of risky but if it hits he wins the round so he's taking a dare he's taking a risk and i'm being very defensive so it gives him sort of the room to make more audacious actions so he does that again but he dodged backwards this time he didn't cancel his own caught me off guard i was ready to guard a different direction I'm going to try to just play defensive with my Sucker Punch, very strong defensive tool. He dodges backwards again, and I don't get my guard break. How could this happen? So he's still dodging on the skewer. So we just get our... I don't know if Glad's new uh, stamina punish. And there we go. Now we started to get around because we're just waiting we're seeing and we know now what he likes to do under certain pressure i don't know if he'll go out of stamina again but he'll probably keep dodging so just something to keep in mind and it's just not going to cloud my thoughts i'm just going to think about it if he ever goes out of stamina again counter sucker punch i got him real hasty so he's done that multiple times now He's not really parrying at the normal time because he doesn't really need to. He's just defending. So I should probably go back to defending and forcing him to put the pressure on. Out of stamina again. Is he going to dodge? It's a safe thing to do. Skewers a lot of damage. He doesn't want to oh. eat that right now. And that's really just what my thought process is, is... I throw the skewer, he dodged the skewer, and I'll remember that next time I throw a skewer. And I'm quite bad, and so I tend to just rely on my awesome memory and just do the same thing over and over again, make me quite easy to read against. So I need to think more to not do that. <laughs> um, oh, don't worry, you've humiliated me a few rounds. So he's been going for parries against my blockable heavies, which sometimes people will or won't do but I've been able to exploit that just then, except when I miss my punish. So you see, he does that parry a lot, and 
he's dagger canceling this room. So I'm gonna try to avoid the dagger cancel because I feel like that is the scarier pressure from Shaman's kit is getting bled. So I'm gonna try to run for my damn life. Oh, uh, come back! And this that. time he missed time the dodge. Fortunate for us. But like I said, as much as I would like to sort of have this be a longer segment, you know, spanning 20,000 episodes, that really is the basic concept. And everything that we talked about here, where I talk about in the posts I make, will carry you to higher levels. It's just whether or not you can sort of flex your muscles and adapt and learn and figure out each opponent. Some opponents are very tricky. They change patterns like nothing. One minute, it's like fighting a different person. Some opponents are very predictable, but they are very good at reading you and your offense and having good defense. All these sort of varieties exist, and how a character like Warlord might have decent defense against Aramusha because he can block both Blade Blockade outcomes. I have to think about that. Because that makes his defense good. It makes it easier for him to read me. It removes some of the risk involved in defending against Blade Blockade. I have a side dodge bash. It makes it kind of hard sometimes to deal with offense. For or It makes it hard for Shaman to get into offense sometimes. But Span knows that and he can adjust. So just how fast you adjust. How you are able to read the other player. It's... Again, it's sort of like chess, which many people call a solved game, but many professional chess players will tell you that the logistical side is just one side. You also need to be able to surprise your opponent. You need to take them to where they think they're comfortable and surprise them. Make everything seem upside down. Make everything unfamiliar. And right now, Span is just playing on the fact that I love to zone OS. He's making me feel uncomfortable with his frame advantage that his character has. Ugh. Well, I did a stupid dodge then as well. I meant to dodge sideways and dodge forward. Um, but yes, yeah, so yeah, you mentioned frame advantage. I do want to like cover that as a, something we can talk about. Uh, as so, I mentioned about um, interrupts and when you can uh, the things you have in chain that allow you to do interrupts. Something else that we can talk about is frame advantage. So. Um, this is, this is a bit of a weird mix-up, but at least with Shaman, I know that my dagger cancel gives me frame advantage to go into a light. So whenever I land a dagger cancel, I know that I can light, and if he tries a light, he's going to he's going to eat it. So if my opponent is like likes to use his light openers, and against me, a lot of it will do because I'm terrible at blocking them. That's also partly why I do the dodge heavy so much because I. Um, that's what, because I can't block chain lights very easily, so I dodge out of the chains a lot. Um, but knowing when you have frame advantage is super useful, especially if your opponent isn't very good at blocking lights. Um, a good example, I think, is Warmonger. She gets frame advantage on her, uh, bash follow-ups doesn't she yes she does so if you do a level one bash as warmonger and you sort of you get this light just pretend i'm warmonger you get this light if the opponent tries to do anything you can just go for a guard break and this won't work against every opponent but i have a lot of opponents i meet in matchmaking for instance they'll try to dodge or they'll try the heavy or they'll try to take their turn so as soon as the bash light hands i just go whoosh, and i guard break and this is very effective against players who aren't familiar with frame advantage or aren't familiar with Warmonger because they're at a disadvantage. They have to wait. And I can sort of pressure them because I have that advantage. I can stop their options. But at the same time, um, there's one, this is going to be the last time I change the lobby. There are instances where frame disadvantage can sort of come into play. And you can sort of defend on a read against frame disadvantage. So I'm going to play Black Prior. And when Black Prior lands a light after a bash, they're at minus. Which means if they try to do anything, the opponent can interrupt. But there is a trick where if you play Black Prior 
and you cancel to your full block stance, you can flip the opponent's attempt to try to light you or take their turn, I guess some people would say. And that's sort of using frame advantage, using the opponent's knowledge and what they feel comfortable with against them. Which again, a lot of skilled people in their fields in competitive situations will say, you need to surprise or confuse the opponent. As illogical as that sounds, sometimes it can be the difference. So have you actually heard of the uh, the flip after bash light spam? Yeah, yeah, I do that a lot. Um, uh, it's, I, I know that I lose frame advantage when I'm playing Black Prior. I know that I lose frame advantage, so it's quite a regular thing that I do is to go into the uh, stance to you know, bait a, bait a light attack. It depends, again, it depends on the opponent. If they are very light attack happy, I do exactly the same thing with uh, this guy. So see, I lose there because I have frame disadvantage. And an opponent can know that and exploit that against me. But if I'm not foolish, I can do this. And that's sort you of... Might yeah, sometimes you have to be careful because if you're, it depends if the opponent's like mashing the light button or not. Because you can see, I can see after a bash light that I can see his bulwark sense come up before he, he, like, he has to wait a little bit. So sometimes I don't always fast flow into the light, light. I just wait and then do it a little bit. Um, because, yeah, you don't want to give, don't want to give it away too much what your opponent's doing. Um, and again, like, Repetition is very important for learning something. So here we see that it's a very sort of basic read, but both players are aware of it. So now it's more complicated. If I do this, span, I'm gonna beat you. Sorry, oh yeah. If I do this, he knows that I can do this. So maybe he shouldn't throw a light. But at the same time, I know that he might know that. So maybe I can throw a light because maybe he'll guard break. Or maybe he'll just wait. So it's not black and white because there are multiple possibilities. Since now we have to see whether or not Spaniard is going to do a light after getting hit by the bash. Anything else you, you can have to think about is if your opponent knows this and again if they're good at light parrying, they will especially if you if you yourself have something where you do have frame advantage and then let's say you, you like block a heavy finisher um and then throw a light if your opponent is gonna know that and is has the reaction to parry lights even if you change direction if you're predictable with that it's essentially like parry it's essentially like throwing a chain light um if you have if you have frame advantage because you you have, have to use your frame advantage fast enough to actually keep it you only have 100 milliseconds before your opponent it goes back to neutral again, you're no longer frame advantage. So your lights have to come out at a specific time, makes pairing those lights quite a lot easier for people who are reacting to them. So if your opponents are capable of doing it, again, you can use the molly and go for a heavy when you have frame advantage. I use that quite a lot um, uh, against people. If I ever see, if I ever get light parried, which you know, happens quite a lot as well, I, well, I run somebody I know light parries, I will often end my frame advantage, go for my frame advantage into a, just a regular heavy. And it works surprisingly often because they are, you know, light parry is very rewarding. People want to go for them all the time. But yeah, I, I managed to, they, they won't work against um, heavy attack. Again, it's also helps to know when you're in neutral. Um, so it's not just about when you're frame advantage and when you're frame disadvantage. It's when you're in neutral is also helpful. After a gu gu counter guard break, we are in neutral. And anything we do at the same time will trade. So here, it's a very advantageous for QK to throw a light attack because he will trade if I light attack um, and that will kill me because I was low health. So yeah, Since I have such a health advantage, I can take at least one heavy from a light parry. I yeah, have something, risk. <clears throat> something I love doing is I love like parrying like, a couple light attacks, two light attacks maybe, and then I like, I love GB spamming the enemy because they just they, they want to throw a heavy because they think I'm going to parry the light again. They just keep on doing it. And it's just like an easy read to bait them into that. 
yeah that's yeah. another example of sort of because the player knows that he's pairing he can just take advantage of that and guard break them it's it's more it's kind of simple because blitz is just being a jerk just I'm a big competitive yeah. jerk <laughs> but uh again he's adapting and he's just making a plan and the skill to do that against increasingly better players is the difference between i guess me and blitz and also reacting but let's not talk about that <laughs> so that qk knows that he can always light interrupt my block wall so yep i was risky. on the dojo and i was very disappointed when i found out yeah <laughs> so uh with heavies again so heavies neutral heavies have 433 milliseconds of guard break vulnerability so if you have just guard counter guard broken someone and they and they spam guard break um we'll do the same and you throw a heavy oh <laughs> we both did at the same time that guard break is going to catch my heavy so you can use that to catch people who are going to throw heavies Although neutral guard breaks are actually very powerful tools in terms of grabbing, especially if you are capable of reacting to light attacks, because then you um, put yourself in a position where you can. Uh, sorry, I have some music in the background and I lost concentration. Um, that that if you're if you're not if you if you know that you can parry light attacks, um, which obviously it's a matter of reactions, but also a matter of practice then your opponent's only options are throwing heavies, so your neutral guard breaks are capable of catching them at the start of that a lot more. So th this is a very valuable thing against, uh, and particularly against characters unlike Black Prior, who has his neut the neutral bash, which can come out fast enough to not be caught by a guard break. If I'm playing uh, Kyoshin, for example, and the only things that I can do a light attack. I can do my four dodge bash, which has 400 ms guard break vulnerability to start off with, because um, it's 300 ms into the dodge and 100 ms itself. Neutral guard breaks are very, and like I can throw heavies, which if they blo are blocked, go into my chain pressure. Or I can do my stance thing as well, which also has quite a lot of guard break vulnerability. And neutral guard breaks can be very strong against this guy, guy if you can block light attacks, because that's the only thing you're waiting to react to. So you can also just go for guard breaks if. If your opponent is like not thinking is is not using the light attacks then you know that the all the options they're going to throw at you are going to be garbage vulnerable so you can grab on prediction and it's going to help quite a lot um like you can use it against characters that have soft feints for the main offense so pk shaman uh nusha um uh, black Pirate is a very famous soft feint uh, yeah he's amazing soft feint but he's like black prior is not going to use his soft feint as much as his neutral neutral batch is much better as, as pressure so your neutral guard breaking against black prior is going to be much less favorable read for you um because because working out when an opponent is going to attack is quite a lot harder than what they're going to attack with if that makes any sense if you're in if you're in a situation like qk is in my chain mix-up he knows that i'm only i'm either going to do a bash or i'm going to do an undodgeable and he knows you know the timings available for them um and he knows there's only three possible directions if i if i throw it if i throw a um undodgeable light you know he knows there's only there's only a few d directions possible for that whereas when he's in when we're just in neutral staring at each other like he doesn't know exactly when i'm going to press light attack so making a read on what's going to happen it so sort of, even if he can react to, to light attacks at least with warning, it's a lot harder um, if you don't know when they're coming out. Like, so, you know, like when we're doing a testing type videos and we're showing the light parries, it's something we regularly do is like say, okay, I'm going to do a light attack from top guard, so it's much easier. If I say to QK, who's not got the best reactions, I'm going to light attack from top guard, he'll probably be able to parry it fairly reliably. Don't put me on the spot. I'm. <laughs> But, um, yeah, but like, you know which you know what I'm gonna do, so it's, it's easy. Especially if I give it, especially if I like, uh, if I do like a faint into light attack to give you a warning that that's what I'm gonna do, then parrying it becomes very easy because you can just 
your t- the timing portion is taken care of already. So, so and sort of brings up a good point here. Uh, not to interrupt you if you have no, that's right. No, I, was, I just blabber. So it's uh, basically it's a concept I like to call rhythm or tempo. A lot of uh, people should be familiar with this if they've played similar games. But span go into your uh, full block. So for anyone who's familiar with Kyoshin, they'll know that. I mean, maybe not for Spaniard, but if you have good enough reactions, you can counter GB with yeah, I'm not the Fusion ask. Force lights. Well, I can do that. <laughs> if you will. Whatever they're called, I forget. Yeah, but You there's... can light out of it, and it makes it very unsafe. So sometimes it's not always really an option to sort of go for the guard break. If you sit there in front of a Kyoshin who is sort of staying in his full block, at some point he might attack. And being ready for that... Like, it's sort of like a stoplight, you know? So, any minute now, it's going to turn green, and I need to be able to block for that. It's this concept of when does he prefer to attack? When does he choose to move from neutral? Similarly, although Span can't react to Black Prior's neutral bash, he can still sort of prepare himself for when it's coming. So, I mean, I could throw it. At any time, I could throw it while I'm talking. I could throw it the next five seconds. I could throw it while he's switching his guard and adding a bunch of delay to dodging. And when he chooses to light, it's just a prediction of when I might choose to attack. Yeah. So, don't have the range on that. That is a but... very good point about tempo. So, car- people do have a tendency because uh, because you're playing a lot of muscle memory a lot of time, and it's easy to vary up what you're going to do. But we talked about it's hard to vary up the timing of what you're going to do. If I say, uh, you know, pick a number between one to five, you're going to pick one of the numbers. And but if I say pick a, say a number of one to five, like in the next thirty seconds, people will find it much harder to to vary up that. Say a random number in the next thirty seconds, people will be find it much harder to vary up that timing. So they, people do have a yeah, and QK called it tempo, and it's it is a, it's basically the window for them to think what they're going to do before they do it and a lot of people will have there will be a particular tempo of fight and you can sometimes you find yourself in a in a, a dual situation where you just like know okay the opponent's going to attack now the opponent's going to attack now the opponent's going to attack now and every time you are you manage to counter it because you have picked up on their their like internal rhythm of their their rhythm yeah. their clock and that could be really devastating for even good players as they'll need to be able to consciously acknowledge when they need to change. So if I always do buffered, for instance, then if I start delaying, I could start catching Spaniard like this. But if I always do delayed and he sees before dodge, he can just start lighting because he knows I'm probably going to wait. He knows I'm not going to, I'm either going to guard break or I'm going to do it really late. So it makes it much more unsafe for me. And I have to say, okay, he's lighted me every time I went for the bash. So I'm going to try to get close and do a much quicker bash or a buffered bash. I don't know how much range the buffered bash has. but Not a giant right out of range, but... So I need to make that adaptation because every time I attack, he knows. And I need to change it up. And maybe if I've been attacking a lot and I'm low on health, I should keep attacking because maybe he'll expect me to be defensive. I should attack more. I should flow to my unblockable. I need to be able to throw off his expectations. I need to be able to guess when he's going to defend and how he's going to defend. When is really big and how is equally as big. It's two halves. When is he throwing the light and is he going to throw the light? And adapting to that is just part of the skill set that you need when you're making sort of your profile on how an opponent plays um just also blitz or rippy if you have any do you have any tips for picking up on opponents uh timings and that their, their, their um tempo because it's quite a tricky thing to yeah uh, it's not really easy it's really just to really watch what he's doing and not just watch what he's doing but also then t- like seeing how you can counter what he does. Like, yeah. I'm gonna pick, let's say, in a competitive settings against certain opponents that I'm used to playing Scram over and over again. I'm already gonna expect something to happen because I know the pattern of the guy because I played against him multiple times. So it takes time to read a certain person. But you can also pick up on, like, 
what most, let's say, BP likes you do, or what most former likes you do. But it's really something you just gotta be attentive to what your pawn's doing and pick up fast. Yeah. I just thought, yeah, I was just thinking if you had like any particular particular tips for the timing, like do you do you count or like um you just Yeah, sometimes you just... when I'm fighting like a black prior, I'll count to three in my head and maybe I'll dodge or light for neutral because I'm expecting them to do a dodge bash after waiting three seconds where nothing happens in neutral. So there's a lot of players who play a lot more simplistically like that. And when you see Black Prior do say five bashes after three seconds in neutral, you sort of get a pattern. So he's probably going to do that more often than not. Yeah. You can sort of just, okay, now, and you just light, you just know he's coming to do it. And that's sort of the process, but it varies between how good a player is at just being unpredictable. And that's the name of the game. Yeah. A lot of people tell you to be unpredictable as advice, but they won't tell you how. For instance, for Black Prior, it varies to character to character. For Black Prior, you can be unpredictable. You can vary your timing. You can do a false dodge and sort of just get a guard break. Max delay. You can flip after you do your light finisher from a bash. Like these things will catch the opponent off guard if they're expecting something different. If they expect you to defend because you're minus, we'll catch them off guard. What they think is predictable depends. And how you act unpredictable depends on that as well. But, yeah. I mean, um, that's essentially that. I just wonder if, if Rippy or Blitz have any, any tips on how to be how to be predictable, uh, unpredictable. If like, I, I don't really have any tips, honestly. I'm mostly... The way I stay unpredictable, well, I hope I'm, I'm unpredictable, is by reading what my opponent thinks I'm doing. So by knowing what he's expecting, I can do the exact opposite of what he's expecting. Exactly. Yeah. So um, if he's expecting you to play that. I don't have any specific tips myself. Yeah, I got one specific tip, which is to use your unviable moves occasionally. Um, because especially if you're in a fight where you... So if I'm in my stance, for example, like I've got my unblockable from the top, I've got my light from the right, which is, you know, it's fast enough that from that some people will... It will catch them, especially if I use it for neutral, I can just, you know, it's quick tap. But the zone is quite slow, and it's such a mess, and it's not going to work land as often. Um, BP is the same thing. He has his, his soft faint bash which is a really bad move because you know, like if you do it on its own on paper it's pretty bad because you know i can he can't channel miss if i do a side dodge from it i can get a guard break on it easily it doesn't have early very good tracking so it's not going to track early dodges either it's in general it's just a bad move but if we are in a situation where we're doing a lot of duels and you haven't used that move at all if your opponent is 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 going to be looking closely for the things that you that you that you are using so is it so and because you're mostly using the good moves in your kit having these bad ones available to throw out like maybe a couple of rounds in or something it's actually something that quite, can be really valuable because they aren't going to be looking for that they're fo they're going to be focusing on looking for your good moves and the things you have been using so throwing out one of these bad moves i mean like you're very rarely going to catch people with red you're very rarely going to catch people doing like your faint to neutral faint to heavy to guard break mixing up between the bash because people aren't going to be dodging it on prediction because they don't, a they don't need to and b it's not something you're going to be using enough for them to be making predictions on it but it does land a weird amount um like have you, you ever said apparently. why would you use that there then yeah. that guy might not always but he might have made the read hey maybe this guy won't see it coming it's really weird to just do the soft faint bash out of here yeah so uh, Smethics asked in the chat, like, what, it, what about conditioning? Well, that's what sort of conditioning kind of is, is you are conditioning is, is basically intentionally doing something so that your opponent expects it. And then instead of doing the thing that they expect, you do something else, the thing that they're not going to expect. So like, I mean, yeah, we talked you know, about it. You... So like, if I'm always doing max delay bash, and then you are responding for max delay bash, then I can sort of break your conditioning. I can surprise you. 
like sort of being unpredictable. These things all come together in a very similar way. If yeah, I'm bullying is always yeah. transitioning from opener light to heavy, then you might expect it. So when I just do another light, and you won't expect it. So even if you might be able to react to that, the fact that you weren't looking out for it can make it harder to react. The same thing when you think he's going to do max delay every time, it makes it easier for you to dodge because you know generally the window. You're waiting for it to come out. So even if you have poor reactions, knowing the condition will make it easier. And if they know that, then they can break that conditioning just by doing something averse to your expectation. So building an expectation for an opponent and then breaking that expectation. So if he always dodges my chain bash, then he might be ready to block a light or block the undodgeable heavy. Because if it fails a couple of times, most people think he'll change it up. So maybe doing it a third time would really catch him off guard because he's waiting for the undodgeable heavy. He's just like, you can't possibly miss that three times and then keep doing that. That doesn't make sense. But maybe it does make sense because he's expecting something else and he gets something so there's no written rule about how to condition an opponent how to know what an opponent expects necessarily but you can sort of build this intuition sort of get this feeling for the opponent by just playing against them often enough which again that's the difficulty with duels that's the difficulty with dominion sometimes that dude you're fighting against will have somebody else with him Sometimes he'll be low health, so you can't get a full fight off. And if it's a duel, he'll probably just leave after he beats you once uh, in a single first to fight. But, yeah. well, so being able to that. build that sure. skill quickly uh, is definitely important and something hopefully you learn to do. It's just make uh, a quick profile. Like every Kyoshin player... Like, I can sort of build a profile on Span. Every Kyoshin player knows they've got a decently evasive dodge heavy. So I can guess that maybe he's just going to do that because it's an easy, safe move. Because even if he gets parried, it's a heavy parry. So it's really easy to predict that. So it makes it easier for me to sort of build an expectation. And he can break it. He can say that he knows that... I'm aware of it, and he can do this. So even though uh, the dodge heavies are reactable, uh, people know that you're... And it happens to me quite a lot. Like, a 500 MS attack is, is reactable, especially if you're expecting it. Uh, same with 600 MS, like, the ones. But, but people do, like, just see you dodging and then parry on the right timing. For that attack so you can quite easily like just like faint dodge and then guard break and that will catch people out who have baited your dodge heavy and aren't thinking that you work that you know that they're going to bait it out so that's the kind of conditioning i guess yeah like i'm so on doing autopilot. dodge heavy over i've over. been conditioned by every kyoshin player to just do that because i'm just on autopilot i know they do that so if span is aware that that happens and I just sort of autopilot into heavy parry. It's an easy guard break. So yeah. that's conditioning. That's knowing the base of the opponent's uh, ability is like all Kyoshins will probably do that because it's a good move. So that's a very basic thing for me to expect. But he breaks my expectation because he knows that I'm ready to expect it. And that's yeah. really I, the endless back and forth that builds the backbone yeah. of every fighting or four honor match and you also on the same same vein have to be aware when your opponent is conditioning you so if they do the same thing a few times in a row maybe they are like maybe and even if they're easy to counter like like i said this the, the dodge heavy like if they faint if you faint and they uh, dodge heavy like loads of times well i get parried once or twice no biggie but but if i then go and then go for the guard break and get like that I'm, I'm making more making more damage up so if if an opponent you know is better than they are playing they might be playing badly or look like they're playing badly on purpose in order to bait you out 
later on like for example you know, spamming guard breaks over and over again or doing doing anything that you that like that they might be doing that to stop you throwing your heavies out or i mean just like throwing neutral heavies just just in general yeah playing doing stuff repeatedly say doing something repeatedly to be to make it a pattern that you can't help but pick up on and then even if you know that it's a pattern they've picked up you've picked up on you, it's it's going to be hard to not act to to ignore that Respond. pattern yeah. when you are presented with it again so that's like, something to think about if the pattern that you're picking up on is actually a legit pattern that the opponent is that the opponent has and is using unconsciously or if it is a, a psycho, something they, like a yeah beach. something they're they're wanting you to pick up on um so like if if it's always like buffered bash and you keep dodging it and it's like why would he keep doing it if it's not landing well maybe i'm getting ready to do this yeah so you have to sort of be prepared not everything that you run into is going to be someone being dumb or someone like making any like you might think oh this is an incorrect read if he's able to dodge it but maybe it's a long con you have yeah. to be ready for basically any possibility and I do that quite a lot with, with that. so in a situation like this i do this something i that i do um which is very risky but it's won me a lot of of duels um, in the final round is when the opponent is low on low on health and they are a character that is like black prior likes to bash and has good out of stamina pressure sometimes i will be much more liberal with my own stamina and maybe i'll zone into heavy you know i'll, I'll throw attacks a lot faster i'll even zone you know i might even risk putting myself out of stamina because i know that when they're out of stamina they will try and do they'll try and bash me they'll try and do the bash mix up and then i can light use an out of stamina light attack to, to kill them and it works a surprisingly large amount surprising amount of time so yeah, it's very unorthodox. Uh, yeah, I, my friend actually did that to me recently. He hadn't played For Honor in like a, a year and a half, and he went out of stamina. And I was trying to do uh, just uh, Kyoshin top unblockable, you know. And when I went up to him and I went into full block, he immediately did an out of stamina light, and it stopped me. And I was just baffled. Yeah. But he was like, I know he's going to come up to me and try to do this because this is like his best out of stamina pressure. And it caught me off guard, and I didn't feel as comfortable trying to pressure him out of stamina, even though it, I should be the one with the advantage. So, yeah, sort of unorthodoxy is sometimes really powerful. I guess, of course, even if it's, it's super. Risky. Yeah, it's it's similar to the uh, using your bad moves point that we made. Is like, yeah, it, if when your opponent isn't, ex you know, the most powerful thing is to throw something your opponent's not expecting. So. You have to be aware of the things in your kit that your opponent won't, won't expect. I, does that make any sense? I'm just I am blabbering a little bit. Um, nah, I mean we've gone, we've repeated. Our yeah, I mean it's we've it's it's sort of important because it's it's really easy to sort of separate things unnecessarily. It's really easy to build like if you say unorthodoxy and then you separate that with bad moves and out of stamina lights, the person interpreting that might see it as two different things and then they're overloading their brain no when we say be unpredictable or be unorthodox we're saying do both of those those are not two different categories that you need to practice you just need to be aware of when it's going to be unpredictable you know if i'm out of stamina then I'll, out of stamina light is unpredictable if i throw this soft faint bash which sucks then i'm being unpredictable it's not a bunch of complicated concepts it's just a few concepts that are very hard to master and be able to contextually come up with uh, a way to use so not every yeah. opponent falls for the out of stamina light but sometimes they do and that's part of your adaptation yeah so um... i don't have really anything else to go over if you have any suggestions yeah, or any 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 questions and just, yeah you can always jump in with any questions at any time or blitz if you think we haven't covered something then if you can't think we haven't covered something just mention it in the chat um uh there was one other thing i was just thinking about but then now i've now it's just it's just dropped out of my head again <laughs> um 
Oh, you mentioned, um, yeah, like the mental load, uh, which I think is quite interesting thing. Like, it's hard to make predictions if you are, uh, you have to make predictions. Yeah, too much. thinking too much. So if you give your opponent a lot of stuff to think about, it's going to make it harder for them to 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 make those predictions. So like, I think I think people the 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 uh the common I think the common trap people fall into. You hear people talk about a lot about wardens fifty fifty, for example, because they are used to thinking of Very it well. as either uncharged or fully charged and nothing else in between. But if you are fainting it and throwing lights after your faint, or if you're like doing a set partially charged roll and you're fainting into guard break, you're mixing up all the options, it's much harder for your opponent to make a good read on are you going to do a fully charged bash. Um, and if you go into a, a game where you only do the uncharged and you only do the fully charged, you're going to get countered a lot more than you would if you mix up all the different things because it's just a lot harder. The opponent is not yeah have more options that's like a beginner mistake you see a lot is uh variable charge characters are either always uncharged or fully charged never partially charged and really you have so many more options and you just need to look and it says on the info hub uh hosted by our lovely friend spam the info mm-hmm. hub will show you you have partial charge and when the opponent realizes that they can't dodge a level one on the level three timing and get hit with a level two, then they will immediately recoil to be much more defensive. They have a lot more to think about now. And if you can sort of overwhelm your opponent with extra options, especially in a team fight, especially in a gank or any other outnumbered situation like that, then the opponent will just feel more and more uncomfortable and bogged down. And that's sort of why Dominion is the competitive mode because you can't, rely on your reactions all the time you can't rely on making uh slow reads there's so much more going on that it's easy for something to slip by you you know even really good reaction players are getting hit by neutral lights when they're playing dominion because sometimes they just can't spare the uh, brain power to react to it yeah i mean the 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 i remember reading an article a new scientist many years ago about the context was uh, texting and driving. And some people claim that they are multitaskers and capable to do multiple things at a time. But actually, the truth is that that does not happen. Nobody is capable of doing multiple tasks at the same time with the same degree of... The same efficacy. Yeah, the same efficacy as if they were doing them individually. It's just not, it's just not physically possible. So when you are playing... Ooh, come back. Yeah, yeah. When you're playing somebody who is capable of doing certain things, then the the more you mix up with all the options, they they have to be thinking about multiple different avenues, and that does make them slower any one individual avenue. So, so like yeah. if it's like the unblockable heavy, some people are going to think of it. Most people will think of it by default with just you know parry or uh, guard break as your options. And this makes it very easy for them to respond. They're not stressed. They're not really getting caught off guard by anything as much. Even if they get guard broken, they might say, okay, well, he did a guard break that time. So we can vary this at a light. So now it's like, oh, now I have to look for a light. We can vary this. Oh, he did a side dodge bash that time. But yeah, we can dodge out of the way of maybe a light or a heavy uh, in response to that unblockable heavy. And now he's like, okay, well, is he going to do this now? So the more options you're able to add, the more even basic stuff like committing to the heavy is going to land because you need to introduce things to your opponent and sort of make them uncomfortable with just this one thing. So this is a partial charge. This is going to be a full charge. And he's able to guess that, but... He would have oh, gotten did, hit. You did a... say it beforehand. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier to read your opponent if they're telling you just what they're going to do. Just open your do opponent's it. Discord and listen to them. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, he's going to get caught by level one dodging for a level three. He's going to get caught level three dodging for level one, all these things. So it's much more taxing for him to respond. And that's really your job is making the opponent uncomfortable. And it doesn't matter what you do to do that. If you do level one over and over again, and you never stop because they just never stop getting hit by it, then that's fine. 
if he guard breaks me and I decide I'll do a level one again, maybe he won't expect it because I got punished last time. And then he tries to interrupt me and I get my armor. So it's just about making sure the opponent can't sit there comfortably. They can't just respond to everything without worrying about the outcome. You have to pressure them. You have to put them outside their comfort zone with things that just they may not be thinking about. Some people expect it differently. Some people will always try to light when they first meet you and some people won't. And again, you find an opponent and you have to be put on the spot and quickly figure out what their preferences are. You know, it's like uh, it's like dating. Oh, I have very little experience. Really hates going out to dinner. <laughs> very little experience. In big big mistake. <laughs> yeah. Can we have a dojo session for that? A dojo session for dating. A dojo uh, session yeah. for four hundred dating. Maybe. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm i good at maintaining a committed relationship, but... I mean, I really like, in Full Honor, I really like ones, so, like, that'd be my preference. But maybe, you know, twos in there as well. Be thrown so, in like, if he, if he friends some dude, maybe he, like, ask him if he likes to do ones. You know, always ask. And then uh, I, I mean the characters themselves, like the Bushi. Solid one, you know. Oh, I, 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 I actually, um... I'm the body type. Tired. Oh, the body type. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, there we go. Us like a oh, I've been made, made, a, made you know, a maybe made maybe they made like a to see a male character. Maybe they like a female character. You know, do you own freestyle moguls on PK? You know? I mean, technically, <laughs> there's not there's not any more male and female characters in the game. They're oh yeah, yeah, yeah. do they like uh, body type one or two? Do you have yeah. freestyle moguls on body type two PK? Yeah, body type. Uh, if you are not body type two PK, then you don't need to be in the dojo. You've already learned everything. You you've, yeah, you've got it beyond. <laughs> Um, right, I think unless there are particular things, uh, questions anybody wants to ask, um, I'm a bit frazzled. So, yeah, uh, I think we've covered as much ground as we can. I try to stretch it out a little bit because I yeah. know I wouldn't have a lot to say. But so, if you have any more questions, you can ask them now, or you can just ping me in the dojo and questions and answers. If I'm online, I'll respond. You can ask Span if you want. Uh, yeah, and um, I do have a few reading materials uh, that we've talked about before. Yeah, let's so can we can you drop some of those links in Dojo Voice Text or something? We'll put, we'll put them when we do the um, when we put this up on YouTube. We can add those links to uh, the description or something, so we can have your your QK's reading materials, which I mean also covered quite a lot of stuff we haven't really talked about, which is like improvement mentality and how to. Um, uh, how to study. I like to yeah. talk about how to study, and I think it's easier for me on the page to sort of describe uh, the headspace for reading. Like, it, it's One. never going to make sense. You basically have to think with your stomach instead of your brain. You'd say that to somebody, they're going to be like, what? But I do my best to try to go into extra detail over there. So, I, uh, yeah, I'll drop those links. But uh, thank you, everybody who came, asked questions, and uh, I hope this was of some use to you. Because if not, my throat hurts because I'm really sick. <laughs> um, oh, I had a yeah. I can do this a lot of time. I've, I remember. I mean, it's, it's on the topic of like improvement and mentality, and and but that's that's a different topic that we can save for another time. Um, just another random question, Kyoshin. What what's Kyoshin's role in the minion? Ganking probably is the thing he's the best at the moment. Um, I guess the characters seem to be designed as a sort of char as, a, as a ganker and an anti ganker in one, but they aren't. Um, so do I send you my PayPal? Like, anything. where where do I send the invoice for this? <laughs> yeah, uh, just um, give me a what's, UPA what's the and I'll. Budget? The dojo's budget is we have three steel between us. <laughs> three yeah. um, very so. Yeah. Um. All right. Well. Yeah. If there's no other questions, I think I call it. I'll just let me check the, ch the channels, make sure I'm not missing one in text. Um, seen people signing up for for on a dating. Um, that is uh, a topic for another dojo. That is a topic for another dojo. Yeah, uh, how to talk to women is uh, something. In, for, in how to talk for women in for. I think we're we're gonna need a couple dojos for that. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think one of the one of the things you don't want to do is type easy after a match. Um, I don't think that so, help, that doesn't help. If you I mean, it depends confirm, if the one's into that. Yeah. If you can confirm, it's like a woman 
Like it's very simple. You just like show feet, show boobs. Just ask that immediately. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and just ask that of anybody really. Um, because if they aren't a woman, they're not going to respond. And if they are a woman, they're probably not going to respond. But some, maybe some women will. You know. So who 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 knows? All right. I think that I think that definitely. <laughs> definitely all right. All right. All right. Okay. I, I think all right. Topic. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining. Thank QK. Thanks, thank thanks, you very much yeah. for coming along and um and talking with us for a long time. Um. Thank you very much for listening and watching on on Twitch. Uh. Ed, thanks everybody for having questions come bring your questions and all that stuff uh yeah thanks blitz for, for talking chatting as well um all right and thank you that person what we got what was his name flag for being annoying so i could ban him and then flex my uh moderator muscles and get to feel good about myself strike um, fear into the hearts of the yeah <laughs> could be a really scary sensei all right uh thanks everybody all right that's enough from me letters